Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I've been looking out at my flower beds and I've just had some asters that have just been calling to me to cut them and bring them in the house and enjoy them in a flower arrangement. So I thought that's why I bought them and I haven't been using them and that's why I made all these flowers is so I could have beautiful arrangements in my house all summer long. And so I need to get out there and do that. And so I want to show you these asters because they're absolutely, in my mind, phenomenal. And, and I'll share them with you so if you're interested in them, you can get the same varieties for next year. I grew these all from seeds. So this is Pavlova Dark Blue. Obviously it's purple. A lot of flowers are called blue that are actually purple. And then if I can get them apart from everybody else. And then there's Flamingo at Sunset and you can see there's a more like a light blushy kind of pink and then almost an apricot pink. It's Flamingo at Sunset. I love these. I'm actually not sure which color I like more. I think kind of the more apricot one, but they're both beautiful. I just have one or two of these, but this is King Size Apple Blossom. And it's a nice white. It has just like, I don't think, I don't know if it'll show up on camera. There's just like the slightest little pinky tinge to the blossoms. It's just so faint, but it's very pretty. And this, I just bought these seeds on a whim, just at a seed counter. And I just thought they would be beautiful with what I already had. I'm looking out my kitchen window and seeing these three kind of lined up in the, uh, flower bed and I just thought they just looked fabulous together and I wanted to try and create something with them and I don't know I don't build a lot of arrangements with asters and certainly not around asters but I really like them and so I really want to try this I'm not sure how it's going to turn out and I've picked just a huge selection of plants here I have some paper daisies they have this great dried quality to them. They're a great dried flower, but they already have that papery dried sound right when they're fresh. There's some scabiosa or pincushion flower. Uh, this is shaloni or turtle's head. And some of these are, are done blooming already, but I still thought it looked kind of interesting. And I was trying to find kind of a spiky element. I always like something that's a little bit spiky in my arrangements. I'm not sure if that'll work with the asters or not to have that spiky element but I wanted to try it. Uh, I have just, I have just some peony leaves for some greenery. I cut a few Cosmos. I think these are a cupcake variety, but I'm not sure. What else did I cut? I think I have one or two zinnias in here. Oh, I did a couple of dahlias. So I have kind of a peachy one and a yellow. I cut some, um, this one doesn't show it well on camera. Let's see if I can get one that does. I don't know how well it picks up on camera, but these are echinacea and I've just pulled the petals off and I just thought that bright yellow of the, uh, the center, kind of goldenish tones there might look nice. And the petals were not looking the greatest on any of them, but I thought that might still bring some nice yellow and just a different texture. What else did I cut? Uh, I cut, I don't know if I did this on camera a few of these snapdragons and they're pretty much past their prime, but I really liked the tones. I was trying to find some tones that would like blend nice with these. So we'll see how those go. And I really wanted some little pops of like white or yellow or something. And I've just completely forgotten what this is called right now, but I should know and I'll put it on the screen for you, but I don't have very much of this that hadn't gone too far, but I thought a few of these might look nice and that's all I literally have. This is the best one. So we'll see how that goes. There's enough beautiful things here that I should be able to put together something that's quite pretty. I kind of thought I might, I'll probably have enough here for a couple of different bouquets. We'll see how it goes, but I kind of thought I might try and do one that's mostly the asters down in this bowl. I don't work with this bowl a lot, but I thought it might be fun to kind of try and play with it. And then I brought out a taller vase too. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes and hopefully we wind up with some pretty, pretty things in the end. 
uh, that might give you some inspiration to try things. But I think it's good to kind of challenge ourselves. I'm working with a few things here that I don't normally work with, but I love and I'd really like to try and learn how to, to use them in cut flower arrangements. And I did use these pruners, these Fisker pruners. If you saw my video where I just tried out a few new pairs and I really got the hang of the, uh, the stem stripper. It worked really well. So I think that's, that is definitely a bonus with these. I still find this um, release just completely backwards, but that might just be me. So if I'm gonna put these in here, I'm just actually wondering, gauge how many I have. So let's see, cut down. Like some of these aren't quite open and I'm not sure. I don't think they're quite at the stage where they will open, but I still think they'll look pretty. And I think I'll try and cut the asters down and take some of these shorter stems, play with them first. And then if I need the longer stems in this bowl, I can use them, but that leaves me some longer stems if I want some for this other vase. And I'm gonna stick them just in here for now, just to keep them in some moisture. I'm just going to work on kind of breaking down the, the asters a little bit and then we'll get to actually building something here. So now I've broken them all down into these smaller stems and I'm just stripping them real quick and just kind of putting them in a bunch. And uh, that's how I like to arrange things. You can arrange straight into the vase and for some people that's what works best. I kind of like to play with it in my hands and then I can put it in the vase and kind of fluff it up later. But. This is kind of how I like working with it. See, I think these little, they're almost like little stars in there. So this will need to get stripped more. This worked really well. I wish I could remember what this is called. That's bothering me. Um, oh, that wasn't good. I ripped it. Should still work. Well, it did work well for me to strip these when I was cutting them. Because these are kind of fussy to strip. But, so it won't stick out and pop out quite like I wanted it to because I broke it, but it's okay. Let's see, find the rest. And I think I have one more in here. Yeah. So you can see they started to open up. A mobium, that's what it's called. So it's nicer to have them. There's one here that's real tight white and then two that have opened up with the yellow center. So a lot of times they just look better to work with them with just the white. So I picked all of these a few hours ago and I've just had them soaking in a bucket of water just to help them rehydrate. What else do we want to put with this? I think these the snapdragons will look nice and I can cut them off these long stems here. So 
some of the leaves off. Coming together nicely. I'm liking this. The snapdragons were growing kind of, they weren't growing upright. I don't have them staked. And it kind of gives a little bit more movement, which with this type of bowl, I think will be nice. Have them kind of spill over the edge a little bit. What do you think so far? Kind of like a delicate little bridesmaid's bouquet or something. You know, for a more casual wedding, of course. So now I'll stick some of these that aren't quite open, and then I still have the whites in here, I think. Where did I put those white ones? Maybe they were the ones that weren't quite open. did need these little bits of movement with these little white amobium in there. I wish I had a bit more that was ready, but that's what happens when you don't cut your flowers. They don't produce as much. And I just, for whatever reason, just have not been cutting my flowers this year. The wasps are terrible out here. I'm not sure this will hit the water, but we'll pop it in for now. Oh, there's another snapdragon. Let's pop that in. I do really like this snapdragon color in here. Now, I think a bit of the peony for greenery around the edges. And then once it's in here, I might pop a few in the middle. Again, I think I can just cut it down a bit. that. So let's see. Should kind of fill this in, then I can pop a few more things in to just give it a little bit more texture and airiness and fullness here. So let's see. I think if I could trim it about here. Kind of let it whoop, fall into place. These bowls are always a little deceptive because they always need way more than I think they do, but let's continue with some of this greenery around the outside. you can see it better. Okay, so what can we fill in the middle with? Do we want these guys? 
This one already broke. Let's see if we can tuck it in the water. And even though these aren't open, they'll still give, again, that movement, just like the Imobium. So these are those Cosmos. I kind of like that. I might look for a few more that aren't open to pop in there. them on the other ones. I always like white in a bouquet. It just brings brings some extra light to the look. I need something in here. Do I want? Flower. Are they too bright? I wasn't sure. I almost wonder. I have this one peachy dahlia that I bet would be beautiful in there. I just have the one that's ready, so I bet it would fill in that hole quite nicely. I think that's pretty good. Looks like I need a little bit more water in here. Some of the stems aren't quite touching water because they go in at an angle. But I'm going to take there's some snapdragon finished flowers there that were just hanging out. And I think this guy needs to be just a little bit shorter. There. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, I am going to set that in the shade and put a bit more water in it. And I'm very happy with that. I could Maybe put a bit more greenery in the center or down on this side. So maybe put one more. Is there any more that needs? Yeah, over here. I just need just a little bit more of that spider. You can stay out here. Just a little more. Greens. with that so let me know in the comments down below what do you think would you have done something different I'm gonna go pop this in the shade give it a bit more water and uh, we'll try and work on something a little taller I might need a few more stems for this size vase we'll see I might have to collect a few more things all right so I set that one to the side the Sun is really coming out and it's a hot day so I'll try and work a little faster here on this one and I just realized I was wrong I had two of these so there's a little 
fly on there trying to enjoy the last bits of this plant. We'll see. I might wind up popping that into that other one and let it sit here in the water for a bit. So let's go with this yellow dahlia and I'm just going to kind of leave these mums here and we'll try and arrange it right in this vessel of water so not out of the water too long because it is hot out. You can see this aster has just, I don't know how you'll see it, but I snipped something off here so I'm just going to shorten that so it's not a big ugly stem there. Make sure these are all in the water. Okay. And I'm probably going to need to cut some more greenery, but I think a couple of these stems just standing strong. Oh, those wasps. Be a little less tall. I used to always put the greenery on the outside, but I find sometimes having it inside a little bit can be just as powerful of an addition. Yeah, okay. So, now let's go with these guys. A lot of very thick stems in there. Spread those out a bit. Oops. Just trying to, some of these asters were all bunched in their colors, so I'm just trying to spread the color out a bit. I love this uh, turtle's head or shaloni. It's a, a perennial, um, so it comes all the time. And even before it flowers, it makes great greenery and stands up well in a bouquet. So it's a great plant to have. Here's a zinnia. I don't know if I showed the zinnias before. I think I just had one. And there's those straw flowers. these little kind of seed heads from the echinacea. I, think I just broke one of these. Yeah. Not sure if I'm loving these today or not. This might not have been the bouquet. Okay. They're not the right height, I think, but. I don't know. And then we have this scabiosa. Oh, there's a. I could tell there was one more straw flower by the sound when I was separating them. I think I just have three stems of this scabiosa, so I'm just going to try and spread it out. And it'll give some of that light movement. Try and tuck it in a bit. So. There. And I think even like this one here, you see the the petals are off, but it still has that beautiful seed head that I think still is attractive. Sometimes I find the scabiosa drops its 
petals right away in the house. I don't know if I just pick it at the wrong time, but I still think I still think it looks nice with the seed head, so I still put them in. Okay, that's looking pretty good actually. Um, it just needs a bit more greenery, so I'm gonna grab a bit more of the um, peony leaves since that's what I started with and pop those in and I think that will work for that. Okay, so all oh, the shadows are getting bad, but we're almost done here. So I did pick a bunch more peony stems, but then I thought I just wanted a little bit different texture. I have a lot of very similar kind of flowers in here. And so I grabbed the yarrow is a little bit past its prime, but it gives that texture and it's in the right color tones. And then this lark spur will really add some delicate movement in there. So see if we can get the lark spur in there. This is much easier to work with if it's um, if you're building it in your hand. Try and strip some of it down. The stems of this are so delicate. I don't want to use the stripper because I think I might break them. Okay, so let's see if we can get that tucked down into the water. Spread it out. Can you see that? I don't, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera. Turn, do the same thing on the other side. And then I can tuck some of these little pieces that I'm cutting off that have flowers on them down around the bottom to kind of carry that look through a little bit. But this, there's a couple that have just seed heads. I'm just gonna cut them off. This one won't be as full on this side, but it should still carry some of that movement texture through. I can get it worked down to the water. There, you can see, hopefully, see how those are in there. And then I take these guys, and just kind of tuck them around the edges down into the water. And they might get covered up, these little ones, by the peony greenery, but try and use them. There we go. Okay, so we'll do the greenery. I want to just put that kind of around the edge a little bit. It's getting pretty full in here. And we can just kind of poke some flowers through it. These wasps are really good to me here. That one's too long. Sometimes greenery and just a little bit of texture and it completely transforms something that's like, yeah, it's pretty, but it's not quite right to, this is what we wanted. See, it's just so much better. Okay, let's just throw a little bit of this yarrow in. Now, hopefully the yarrow doesn't wilt because I just picked it and it hasn't time to really 
soak in some water, but it'll be in water here. I don't know, there's something about just cutting it and letting it sit in water that seems to do good for it. Yeah, I think that just that little bit of texture, a little difference in texture, a little bit more greenery. And that has kept going from, it was kind of ho-hum, yeah, it's a kind of cute little garden bouquet, to something that's actually quite beautiful. I'm really happy with that. Okay, I just moved us into the shade a little bit here. I grabbed this one little dahlia. I'm gonna try and just find a little spot for it. Right there, is that the right height? I need to go just a little shorter. Trick is always pulling them back out to do that. There, yeah, I think it just needs to be tucked down like that, hey? Oh, I'm so happy with these. Oh, I'm glad those asters were calling to me and I took the time to listen and come out and cut these because now I have two beautiful bouquets to put in my house, cheer up a couple rooms. Brighten up a couple of rooms. I'll just have to watch not to bring all these wasps in with me. I can see three on this one right now. Uh, and so when you have your cut flowers like this, like I said, it's good to cut them early in the morning when it's still cool out and they've had time overnight to kind of rehydrate and then just let them soak in the shade somewhere for a little while to help, you know, let them get as much moisture into their stems as they can in a nice cool place and then take them and recut them and put them into your arrangement how you want them and then flowers will last the best if you just keep nice fresh cool water not cold but cool water and keep them out of direct sun and heat and they should last usually for five days some of them will last close to 10 and it'll just depend on you know the the point in, t in time by the flowering that you picked them, the variety of flower that you picked and that sort of thing, how long they're going to last. And like I said, some things like the scabiosa and even the larkspur will occasionally just drop their petals, but a lot of times they still have either an interesting seed head or just the, the stem itself, the leaves, that'll add just that still that texture or interest to the bouquet. So don't be afraid to just leave them in there even if they drop their petals. Also, don't be afraid if you have a couple of flowers that have um, kind of browned up, dried, didn't last very long for you, just pop those out and kind of move the other flowers around and usually you can, you know, make the arrangement still work and look beautiful and last longer that way. Thanks for coming along. If you enjoyed seeing this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and we'll see you next time I'm out here in the yard and garden. Thanks for watching. Bye.